Dear colleagues, I would like to continue talking about aggressive uh, granulomatosis. Uh, this is the tactics of look and uh, stay. And uh, I would like to say that it's quite a reality. We deal with a very rare tumor. The frequency is uh, and the um, incidence is uh, two to six for one million of population. And uh, so approximately this is up to 10% of all the sarcomas. And if you uh, translate all this rough um, calculations, then you will get approximately 400 new cases per year with the diagnosis of aggressive fibromatosis. So this orphan disease uh, is the reason that for the first time these results were reported at the first All-Russia Congress devoted to rare tumors. At the moment, I'm repeating just uh, these uh, data. The uh, tumor is associated with very high percentage of local regional relapses, but at the same time, the patients live for quite long as uh, it does not metastasize and the patients actually die from local relapses. So the uh, five year and the 10 year um, uh, survival uh, accounts for seven, uh, 70 to 80%. So it's quite uh, uh, clear that there is a role of beta catenine uh, of uh, the mutation of um, gene uh, C, uh, kit CD34 and PDGFR. Uh, so it's important for the DIV diagnosis, which accounts some reactive uh, myofibroblastic processes. And as a matter of fact, this is a benign tumor. And uh, the uh, Gardner fibroma, fibromax sarcoma, and also solitary tumor. Actually, also the uh, so-called almond disease. This is a sclerosing mesotinite. So the role of um, of CT, uh, CT and BB, uh, NNB1 uh, plays a very important role. Uh, so the main parameters of, uh, I must apologize, I cannot hear the speaker. So apart from localization and 10 year uh, progression free survival um, in the uh, tumor of the uh, the frontal uh, of the anterior abdominal wall accounts for 88 percent and the rest 62 percent the abdominal and the extra abdominal if we speak about the resection margin then um, uh, with the exception of abdominal dysmoid, where the uh, margins uh, they uh, play the same role as uh, in sarcomas, uh, in other types of uh, tumors of, uh, of this kind, the resection margin uh, do not play important role for the five-year survival and uh, for the disease-free survival. And the results that uh, show significant uh, important results on the, uh, on the resection margin. Here we have the abdominal forms of uh, the dysmoid uh, type of tumors. I have already said that for them it plays a role. Also a very important prognostic role of the beta-catenine mutation. There are several studies that clearly show that the gene mutation in the third exon, in the cadone 45, is prognostically unfavorable sign, which tell us about the fact that the patients will live significantly um, worse and the course of disease will be more aggressive. Rea whether it is reality or uh, some, uh, this uh, look and stay strategy. For many years, look and stay or wait and see. So for many years, uh, doctors that deal with such patients with aggressive fibromatosis, they marked a very important fact. And some patients, as all of us know, receive uh, for long oral drugs, for instance, non-steroid uh, anti-inflammatory. Uh, Anti-inflammatories, for example, uh, COX-2 inhibitors or endometacin. And uh, at this background, uh, there is a certain improvement. and. Uh, 
uh, the tumor stops growing or at least the growth is halted. And uh, sometimes the uh, therapy is uh, sort of stopped and uh, the still the um, tumor does not resu did not resume the growth. So sometimes patients without any oral drugs just fo were followed up. And uh, we could not recommend it as a, a standard, of course, or approach to therapy until uh, we uh, received publications. So for the first time, there is a publication in 2009 which demonstrates that five-year survival rate, progression-free survival, is pretty much the same in patients with relapses and patients with the primary uh, tumors. That article clearly shows that if we deal with the sarcoma, that we clearly know that the uh, prognosis will be much worse than the primary uh, in a relapse than a, uh, if compared to primary tumor. But in uh, this more time fibromatosis, uh, sometimes they do not grow and sometimes even spontaneously regress. It results in the following: the primary and the relapsing forms. Some group of patients they can live um, uh, they can live uh, quite long, equally long. Uh, this is a publication of 2009, which shows a reduction of aggressive fibromatosis in the uh, area of the deltoid muscle, and the period of the follow-up accounted for six months. The second publication appeared to be very important for us. Uh, it appeared in 2017. There was quite a big clinical sampling. And with clear examples, this is a abdominal localization of tumor. And for five years of dynamic follow-up, the patient is not on treatment. And there is a market uh, uh, reduction in the uh, tumor bulk. It, now here you can see a scapular localization. And again, certain uh, spontaneous regress is marked in eight years period. Similar data come from our uh, hospital. National Medical Oncology Center, uh, named after Blachin. Now, here you can see several examples of patients with the uh, lesions in the um, forearm, in the left forearm. Now, you can see that starting from 2004, uh, there are no changes and uh, no, no, no growth almost. The same patient, uh, you can see a different uh, type of instrumental study. We started uh, following up the patients in October 2015, and now we have already 2019 data for 2019. Where there is certain growth for 5, 10 millimeters. This is uh, 2017. There is no um, just enlargement in the size of tumor. Uh, this is an, uh, the same patient, but the uh, just plain is different. Uh, another patient, 54 years of age, for the first time she was diagnosed in. Uh, 2007, and here we have follow-up period starting from 2016. So from 2016, you can see here the malformation for three years in a row it does not change. It has the clear but uneven margins. So the sizes they are uh, stay the same. It's five to eight uh, millimeters. The same patient, but that's uh, different. Uh, just MRI, um, and you can see here no changes in the area of the forearm. Another patient, 64 years of age, with again a lesion in the forearm. This is the first relapse in a year. Um, uh, the uh, follow-up period starting from the um, 2016, uh, this is 2016, 2017. You can see certain change in the structure of tumor and also certain growth of the component that you can uh, visualize very well. If we speak about the sizes, then you will see the reduction in slice in the process of dynamic control. Once again, I would like to say that the patient is not on treatment at all. So this is um, uh, gluteus uh, localization, and uh, the diagnosis was first um, uh, set in 2013, now you can see 2014, 2017, you can see that the tumor is uh, just tumor reduction. There is clear reduction in size. 
this is the year 14, 2014 and uh, 2017. Another patient with quite a um, big uh, tumor. This is dysmoid aggressive fibromatosis in the foot. The diagnosis, uh, it, uh, he was diagnosed in 2011. The period uh, of follow-up is four years. And you can see some growth in the fibro fibrotic tissue and gradual but insignificant growth of approximately five, six millimeters per year. So there is a solid component that uh, grows. All these observations naturally resulted in the in the change of strategy in our guidelines. Aggressive fibromatosis is included nowadays in the interest group of onco-orthopedicians, and we do know about it in the American uh, treatment standards. Aggressive fibromatosis is included in the uh, block of uh, soft tissue sarcomas as well. Now here you can see two blocks. This is the peritoneal and the intra-abdominal localizations, and, uh, here you can see head and neck as well as the body and limbs. In all of them we have separate form of aggressive fibromatosis and we also have here a block of uh, treatment for aggressive fibromatosis. It's uh, uh, in the abdominal wall, in the head and neck, in the limbs, in the body. It's just with the only exception of the anterior uh, abdominal wall. So all the patients should be discussed at the multidisciplinary conference with the team that deals with the sarcoma treatment. This is something that is clearly included in the clinical recommendations by American oncologists. Also, the treatment of aggressive fibromatosis, it has the same picture in European guidelines. In the first block, we speak about resectable process, and we have two options here. We start treatment or we observe. This is exactly the look and stay strategy. We just observe the patient. If the patient is stable, then we continue observation. If there is progression, progression that can be assessed by the specialists, then we uh, shall move on to the treatment. Of course, there are options of uh, radiotherapy, pharmaco treatment, and surgery. The second block is uh, about non-operable, non-resectable sarcomas, and uh, these are the processes that can result in the significant uh, disabilitating um, uh, surgeries. Uh, one of the options here is, um, uh, again, look and stay wait and follow up. Uh, and if there is progression, then we start therapy with all possible methods which we have in our hands. And uh, this is the slide which is very difficult, and I'd like to say that the information is uh, sparse there. This is a consensus between ERTC uh, on the treatment of um, bone and soft tissue sarcomas and European Uranet the uh, sarcoma uranet patient. So the sarcoma consensus tells us about the fact that in the beginning, when we just uh, diagnose uh, in the first uh, two, three uh, years, the patient doesn't need any treatment and we need just look and see, or wait and see. If there is progression, if we speak about the um, anterior wall, then uh, we use surgery or hormonal therapy. And if uh, we speak about the localization in the um, limb and neck and the abdominal wall, then we can act in the um, uh, abdomen, then we actually need to um, treat. If there is relapse, again, we uh, start with the wait, watch and wait strategy, look and stay, so all of them uh, can be just understood similarly. Aggressive fibromatosis, the strategy of look and stay is uh, first and foremost. And then I will uh, tell you more about uh, who and when. So these are the patients with no symptoms, no uh, mitigation of uh, quality of life, uh, no extended surgery in the, um, just, uh, in, in the future. 
or patients uh, who uh, should undergo uh, disabilitating surgery. And also the planned surgery will result in the um, significant functional and cosmetic defects. Also, this strategy is possible if you have a patient with uh, non-resectable process with high risk of complications and mortality. And uh, for a certain period uh, who don't have uh, mitigation of uh, quality of life. So who should be actually determining this strategy? I would like to say it's quite clearly that this is the specialist who has all the access to all the variants of uh, treating aggressive, uh, of aggressive um, fibromatosis, onco-orthopedician, or a large department which is specialized in sarcoma treatment. So when? I've already showed uh, recommendations uh, of American Society of Oncology when we have primary tumor, when we have relapses, a relapsing process, and when we have combination of operable process with uh, uh, or non non-resectable, um, uh, which is uh, asymptomatic. Thank you for your attention.